Sarah Albadwi here from Horse Racing Nation, joined by Jeff Bessa of Charting Horse Value. You've recently joined the Horse Racing Horse Racing Nation family to selling your Charting Horse Value in both the daily as well as the monthly subscription options. And Jeff, you've got a bundle for the Breeders' Cup as well with all those Breeders' Cup races. Tell me a little bit about the charts for those that haven't already tuned in to what you're doing. Well, the Breeders' Cup charts are really effective. Um, and the because the way I handicap the races and um, uh, pr predict win percentage, okay, which gets translated in an odds line, works just as well for the Europeans as it does for Americans. Um, obviously, we don't get all the speed figure information uh, from the Europeans. And a lot of these jockeys are coming over and the data package that I'm using the jockey statistics or trainer statistics, they don't exist in Europe. They only exist for America. Um, but the way I analyze past performances and assign win percentages to horses works. It works so well that I can go to Ascot and play only Ascot races when they have the data available to me and do just fine just playing PFDS odds. Okay, I make money. So the PFDS odds column, which I've always tell everybody, is the most important column in my spreadsheet. It's the spreadsheet that's trying to identify value, okay? Uh, it's not always right, but it's profitable in the long term. So that's the first thing I wanted to mention. Um, the second thing, is, in addition to the charts in my Breeders' Cup package, I had actually analyzed every single race. I'm talking about anywhere from five to eight horses per race that I think need to be talked about. I might be talking to them about them because I don't like them at a short price or I like them at a short price or I like them at a long price. Then there's a few horses I don't talk about because I just don't really give them much, uh, in my opinion anyway, I don't give them much of a shot. But uh, so you're going to get not only my charts, which work for Euros very effectively, but you're also going to get my analysis and it's only $20. So, you know, there's no better deal out there. It's a great deal for all of that Breeders' Cup information. I know the charts had a, a significant amount of success at Ascot over the summer as well. I was playing along with those because, I mean, there's just not as much information that's easily accessible about a lot of these European horses. And that was why I wanted to go to you for the Philly and Mare Turf because we've got some Euros coming over and some of them look pretty tough. What does the chart think about horses that are coming over from Europe for this race? Yeah, and I want to, you know, I want to hear your opinions as well. Um, so, first of all, the chart is very high. And by the way, I mean, uh, I'm only going to do this kind of detailed analysis with you on this race, protect my, you know, protect my customers' investments on the other race. But uh, the chart is very high on the horses coming out of the pre opera, okay? Uh, that is a key prep. Horses that run well in the pre opera run well in the Philly and Mare turf. And there are several horses in here from that race. One is Nashua, who actually has very good early speed. Now, Keeneland, the turf course is kind of in favoring closers. Uh, so that's a little bit of a concern for me. And uh, in that race, above the curve was only a head back of Nashua to finish. Above the curve was making up ground. And uh, so I really like both of those two horses a lot, the three and the four. They're very inseparable, very different running styles. Above the curve will come from a little further back. Um, I'll be watching the tote. I think both of them make sense. And the other horse coming from that race, which will be a little overlooked, is Tuesday. Uh, and Tuesday did tire in that race to finish six, beating a couple lengths. But, um, you know, May not, you know, that, that ground was extremely soft. I don't know if you watched the arc day, but it was torrential rain. Uh, so soft is an understatement. And, you know, some horses don't like that. You look back in his form and he's run extremely well on good surfaces in the Yorkshire Oaks. He was second beaten a length by Alpen Alpenista. Okay. Uh, in the Kazoo Oaks on good turf at Epson, he was a, uh, he beat, he won the race. He beat Nashua. Okay. So this horse might really move up on um, firm ground. I think the ground will be uh, firm. And Ryan Moore, Aiden O'Brien, eight to one. This horse might get a little overlooked because finished up the track. 
And horses that finish up the track in the opera do extremely well in the Breeders' Cup. So just starting with the Euros, those are three Euros, uh, I think, merit very long looks. I think this is a race where we do have a very strong European contingent that is coming over with mm -hmm. some of those horses that you mentioned coming out of that pre de l'Opera. Um, I know that you mentioned that a horse like National can sit close early, and you and I have talked about this race a little bit off camera or on camera in another location as well. Mm -hmm. And I know that there is some speed signed on to this race. Um, my top pick being in Italian, who I do believe is the speed of the speed. And I understand the concerns about the distance for this horse, but I will say, looking at this uh, this one's past performances a little bit, even though the speed has been her greatest weapon as of late in the Diana and in her last start over Re Regal Glory at Keeneland, it's not as though this is the only trick that's ever been successful for her. If you go back in her past performances, she can rate if she absolutely has to. I think that that's not likely to happen. I think that they're likely on a send mission with her, mm -hmm. um, knowing what they have underneath them and that she can uh, take that speed and keep it going. We'll see how far she can keep it going. But I do think that she is going to be the one that is that key speed of the speed and on time form us, which is a product that I use. She is not only in front early, but she is also in front late and she does have the highest buyers in this group as well. So those are two things that I look at and I consider in my handicapping. Um, I know that you don't want to take a horse at a shorter price. That's doing something for the first time in general, but with her, I do feel confident that she can kind of keep going and, and see uh, how far she can see this out though. I do agree that there are going to be some good horses running at her late. I really like an Italian. I'll give you my comments on her. Um, first of all, she's the most likely uh, North American winner. Okay. And even though the track has not been as kind of speed, although she did one wire to wire at Keeneland going a mile, uh, even though the track is not as kind of speed, and especially now going on three sixteenths, she will get the shortest trip around the track. Okay, and that is a major factor because trips rule. Okay, you need trips and you need great closing kick. And if you don't have great closing kick, you better be saving ground um, like she will be. So those are the positives. The negatives are the mile three sixteenths. Yes, she's got that mile in an eighth race, which was super impressive. That was at a, a, a six horse field, but a very salty field that she won. That mile in an eighth race impressed, impressed me a lot. Uh, the mile doesn't impress me as much. It was extremely fast time. But, um, you know, I, I, I'm i more interested in that nine furlong win. But I am a little worried about nine and a half. And I think Nashua is going to be sitting right off of her and should get a better, you know, we should be able to run her down. But, you know, and seven to two is a bit short, um, you know, but she could drift up. Chad Brown. Loves these Philly and Mare turf races. He's won this race many times. So, you know, you're, you're, you're going a good direction. And of the trainees for him, because he does have two others in this race, I definitely like her the best. Um, I've never really been aboard the Rougier train. I know there was a lot of hype with her coming over and making her first start in the U.S. I think kind of after that, she was a little flat and disappointing. And I think that people look at her race last time at Woodbine, and they want to say that she had this awful trip um, versus a horse like Moira, who um, was deservedly disqualified. Um, but I... I don't know that I necessarily agree with that assessment. Um, I know that people that are making the argument for one or the other uh, want to argue their side as best they can, but I don't really like either of them. Rugir, I don't like at all. This horse lost to Delica two back as the favorite. She was in that Diana race, and for me, she was a toss in that race. I didn't like her at all, and she she ran unimpressively. Um, so. She wins the E.P. Taylor with Lasix on, okay? Now she takes the Lasix off. By the way, she only won it by a neck. She beat a horse making their, her first start ever on the turf. I, I think this horse is a notch below. I don't like this one at all. In fact, I probably like Virginia Joy better than Regeer, uh, although I don't like Virginia Joy uh, particularly either. Uh, I really don't like the uh, North American horses. The best filly and mare... North America uh, turf routers, Warlike Goddess, who I would have given a serious shot in this race. 
Uh, but you know they're going for the wrap. They're going for the longer distance, which really suits her. So she didn't come in here. But uh, I don't think any of these horses could run with Warlike Goddess. And the horses coming over from Europe are in Warlike Goddess's league. They're very good. I agree with that assessment completely. Of the rest of the U.S. contingent that's lining up to face these European horses, I didn't see anybody that I had any interest in. The only reason that I gravitated towards an Italian was because she will be the horse that's in front. And I feel like from watching New York turf racing, I'm just automatically programmed to find that horse that is going to be in front early, though I don't think they're going to go quite that slow that we see often on the Naira circuit. Was there anyone else that you felt deserved a mention or somebody that you wanted to toss in underneath somewhere? Yeah. Yeah. Just one other comment on her, by the way, when she took the lead in the Diana, that was a bit unexpected. Yeah. Um, you know, because everyone thought the horse on the rail, I think it's technical analysis. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. Everyone mm -hmm. thought that horse would take the lead. I was surprised when we're here. Took that lead. So it was a really impressive effort. Now, I mean, Moira, you know, uh, I know Ed loves Moira. Um, and there's a lot to like there. Um, but those wins in Woodbine were on synthetic and uh against weaker you know against restricted horses she did run really well first time turf so she could improve but she's also going to be taking lasix off for the first time in her career we don't know what to do with that and she's drawn wide i mean it's not the greatest draw although she's going to take back but it's not the greatest draw either there's several reasons i mean i like her a lot at 10 to 1 i think she's pretty interesting but um there's some negatives there, okay? And she lost to Rugir, you know? So um, let's see if there's any others I wanted to, to, to spike out. It's that kind of race. And once you get past those Euros and in Italian and uh, possibly a little interest in Moira, I mean, um, I don't really yeah. see going to Vegas as one with a chance, although she, she does have some early interest. Um, I don't really see a case for Lady Spite Spear. Um, Mies and Zien seems like one of the, the more unlikely Euros and, and Family Way has run some good races but I think that she's also a cup below in a spot like this I think you know if you can afford it you could go four deep the problem with four deep is you're taking the four lowest morning lines and uh, Nashua Tuesday above the curve and in Italian I mean it's highly unlikely one of those four doesn't win um you know, so, but you can't do that because that's the four lowest morning line. You're going to have to take a stand against somebody uh, for serial wagers. I mean, Tuesday, if you want a good win bet, Tuesday is a good win bet. Uh, you know, you, the, the, the past form is there. And uh, by the way, she ranks second on my chart. Um, you know, but I do like the Prix de la Opera horses that ran well, uh, Nashua and above the curve. I think one of the three of them wins. It's very hard to pick. Very difficult to pick between the three of them. And you're right, within Italian, she, she's the only American horse I would consider because at least she'll be on the lead. Uh, no one is going to, nobody's going to be out kicking these Euros. So you better be in front. Right. I think that's her only chance to get the job done in a spot like this because, I mean, the European horses are just better than what we have to offer right now for the this division. Yeah, they are. This is a salty group of Euros. Uh, I thought the group, I thought the turf euros were remarkably weak this year. Yeah, there's some big names, but they're actually a little bit off form. Broom, Mishra, those are big names, but they're not running that great lately. Um, this, the, the, the euros that came over here are some of the best uh, we've seen in a while. I mean, this is a really good group. Last time we had a horse maybe this good, I'm thinking a Ouija board. Ouija oh, board. yeah. Ouija board was so good. She was a turf router, um, yeah. Philly turf router. I think she won it two years in a row. Um, but, you know, that's kind of the way I'm seeing it. Uh, it's going to be a little chalky. You're going to have to take a stand somewhere. Um, and I'm not sure which way I'm going yet, but I am going to let the odds guide me um, when I'm placing my win bet. Yep. 
All right. Well, thank you for your insight for talking about what those uh, charts think of this race, because I think the insight to those European horses is really such a valuable feature of what you get with those charts. And it's not just this race. It's all the rest of the Breeders' Cup races. It's actually every race in North America all the time, whenever you want to check any of them out. And people can find you on Twitter. They can find you on Facebook. They can find you at picks.horseracingnation.com as well, where you can check out those charts. Jeff, thank you for taking the time to talk some Breeders' Cup with me. Thank you so much, Sarah. Good luck.